It's time for the Entertainer Television Show, a weekly show that profiles the best in entertainment from all throughout northeastern Wisconsin. Plus, this week's competition from the Perfect Ten Search, the search for the sexiest lady in northeastern Wisconsin. Humor from the Rev North, the best of in our area, and the truly unusual. It's all on the Entertainer. Sunday night, Entertainer Television Show. It was week number two for the Perfect Ten search at the Windjammer in Sheboygan. That is the search for the sexiest lady in northeastern Wisconsin. It was a wild night. Highlights from that in a little bit. Right now, hang on tight. Here we go with the women of oil wrestling. What are these guys in this building here, what do they want tonight? They want to see the women. They want to see the women. They want to see us get rough. They want to know that they get in the ring, we'll kick their butt. Naughty Nikki, undefeated? That's right. For how long? <laughs> for the rest of this tour, that's for sure. <laughs> how do you get that body in shape to... Well, why don't you try wrestling every night for about two hours a night? <laughs> how long have you been in this business? I've been in this business for about three years. Do some fast talk, woman. How does your boyfriend justify you out on the road in front of umpteen men, scantily clad, oiled down, and rolling around with other women? He doesn't really have much to say about it. I don't have a ring on my finger. <laughs> Anybody on this tour have any notable credits, magazine credits? They've done some other tour or something? Uh, a lot of people, a lot of the girls that we've had um, have either done other other wrestling with other people or pretty much have stayed with our group completely like I've stayed with this group I've been with this group for about almost two years so do you actually like wrestling pro wrestling yeah I love it you can tell I stay in shape <laughs> who's your favorite WWF star um I like Hulk Hogan <laughs> hygiene question every day oiled down to the max how do you get you know what do you keeps my skin soft <laughs> it's a good show guys it's a good show <laughs> Are there any problems when you work a show of this nature? Absolutely not, Al. I'm having a really good time. What about in the crowd? Any difficulty tonight? I don't know. I haven't been near the crowd yet. We hear these ladies are hard to work with. No, actually, I love them all. And as you can tell, they really like me, too. Finally, ever been hurt? Hurt doing this? Yes, I sprained an ankle. I've gotten punched and I've had a fat lip. <laughs> and um, I've never gotten majorly hurt, but I've seen other girls get really hurt. I need the hurt one from you, too. Injuries, rattle them off. I'm hurt right now. I sprained my uh, ankle, or actually my foot, about two days ago, and I did a show last night and couldn't even walk. I was hobbling. But that, that's the worst that I've ever been hurt. Well, let's just say that I'm uh, best friends with a chiropractor in my hometown. <laughs> I'll agree with that one. Oh, I had twisted ankles. Uh, probably broke my nose twice. Uh, I got some chipped teeth from the other night. Uh, I was doing a challenger match, and this one nice big guy took me, and he just body slammed me. and. I kind of just threw my back out a bit, but I made it. <laughs> Occupational hazard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I'm still alive, so, and I'm still doing it, and I love it. So, a plus. When you're crossing a country covering 17 states on your way to Wisconsin, a lot of crazy things happen. We talked with Jack the Ripper, leader of the Women of Oil Wrestling. Well, we were in one uh, Rock Springs, Wyoming one time, and uh, we had a, a very large, large bar fight that... Uh, Actually, it ended up uh, the show was on the verge of being canceled uh, because the advertising wasn't too well. And after the bar fight happened, it hit the paper the next morning and the show sold out. So, you know, any publicity is good publicity. Slipping and sliding with the ladies of oil wrestling at the City Center Theater Green Bay, The Entertainer. From Kakana to Kohler, it is the top three video rentals you're throwing in your deck this weekend, courtesy of Blockbuster Video. One take, Norb, one take.
The third most running movie this week at Blockbuster is, very is Little Man Tate, starring hey, Jodie Foster, <laughs> Diane Weist, and Adam Hanberg. Can't explain it, Jane. I mean, it's not so much what he knows, but what he understands. A working class single mom reluctantly enrolls her genius son into a research institute for gifted children where a lonely special teacher takes a keen interest in him. 24. A very intelligent seven-year-old, Little Man Tate. Fred, what's the cube root of 3,796,466? 156. Correct. The second most rented movie this week here in northeastern Wisconsin at Blockbuster Video is The Fisher King, starring Jeff Bridges and Robin Williams. Oh. Oh, she loves dumplings. That's a Wednesday ritual. A former Radio Shack DJ drops out of society after one of his broadcasts provokes a tragedy and meets a former college professor who is now a spiritual leader of New York's homeless. What's the matter, baby? Well, I met this beautiful woman. Oh, come on now. Ed, if you start uh, telling me you're falling in love again, I'm going to have to remind you of that time we made you propose to that uh, checkout girl at Thrifty's that you like so much. Do you remember her reaction? <laughs> is just a girl. Uh -huh. This is a beautiful woman. This movie won five Oscar nominations, including Best Actor, The Fisher King. Okay, Jack. All right. You face behind the voice. But now it can be Jack Lucas, the face and the voice. Or maybe just Jack. Exclamation point. And the most running video this week. $650. Close to home at Blockbuster Video. Yeah, you wear them. Yes. Is a last Boy yeah, Scout like a TV featuring Bruce Willis, Damon Wayans, nope. and Hale Berry. <laughs> An ex-Secret Service agent and a disgraced football star team up to fight a gambling conspiracy. You don't think the cops could help you? Sure. After I'm dead, they'll perform the autopsy. Responsible for a dancer's murder. You'll love all the excitement Jake, of the off. last Boy Scout. Soon to be stocked on the shelves at Blockbuster Video, here's a look at upcoming movies. On May 13th, The Butcher's Wife starring Demi Moore. On the same date, it's Highlander. JFK will be out 10 days from now. The story about the conspiracy of John F. Kennedy. Here's a quick preview. Come on, Jack. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Once again, don't forget, JFK will be out on May 20th. For the widest selection in movies, make a stop at a Blockbuster Video near you. Blockbuster Video, Lombardi Plaza and East Town Mall, Green Bay, and Richmond Street, Appleton. Wow, what a difference! Wow. Music, it's a way of life. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just a beginner, the stamp of the guitar seller gives you the best deals in town on a wide selection of new and used guitars, amps, accessories, and sound gear at discount prices. If you don't see it in stock at the guitar seller, we'll special order it. The guitar seller offers lessons by professional instructors at all levels. Mention this ad for 50% off your next string purchase. Wouldn't you rather play guitar? Now you can at the guitar seller, 2248 University Avenue, Green Bay. Where does Green Bay rock? The answer is easy. 730 North Quincy, Green Bay, Studio East. Studio East with live entertainment four nights a week and weekly drink specials. Gather with your friends at Studio East. Count on it every week for the best rock at Studio East. This coming week, Wednesday, the one and only incredible jukebox heroes. Rock with Hard Rock and Aggressor May 14th and 15th. And Milwaukee Shy Boy will be in town on May 16th. Studio East, 730 North Quincy, Green Bay. JTCDs, with the largest selection in Manitowoc, over 1,000 CDs. We also sell posters, blank audio tapes, cases, and more. We also have a listening area. Listen to your selections before you buy. JTCDs, where most CDs are $5.99 or $7.99. Come and see us soon. We have rock, rap, country, classical, dance, and jazz. We have the CDs you've been looking for. JTCDs, 1013 Washington Street, Manitowoc.
the pages of the entertainer, blues master extraordinaire Jim Liban, this coming Saturday the 16th at Sandy's on Michigan Avenue in Sheboygan. And good band still around, rocker, 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 this Friday at Moondoggies. This Friday at the City Center Theater in Green Bay, it's Alternative Music Fest 3, featuring the String Beans, Vacuum Scam, Rebel Waltz, Marlon Perkins, and Wild Kingdom. And yoikes! Friday and Saturday at Michael J's Cantina in Green Bay, it's the whammy winning sounds of Pat McCurdy. The all-female band White Witch will be at Flashback in Two Rivers this coming Saturday, May 16th. And the famous 50 Cent Night at Club Safari every Tuesday and Thursday. Can beer and rail mixers for only two quarters. To find out more, just pick up a copy of The Entertainer. From our personal page, here's our Entertainer Personal of the Week. Incarcerated, handsome black 40-year-old male, 6 foot 5, 210 pounds, seeking healthy relationship, will be released in December 92. Am also a homeowner looking to sell. If you're interested in responding to this personal, write to Entertainer Personals, P.O. Box 8031, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54308-8031, Attention Box A8. For more information on placing a personal, pick up a copy of the Entertainer newspaper. Swine hoods of America, put on that bag of chips you're sticking in your yap, and pay heed to the words of the tower of power too sweet to be sour, the man with the million dollar face, the squisher. Now the other day, my advisor, Shane the Brain Reno, says to me, Squisher, he says, let's go to the Packer Hall of Fame and do a story. I mean, they're premiering the Packers 1991 highlight film, and admission is free. Now Shady Shane's got his heart in the right place, but right away I gotta lower the boom on him. Brain, I says, Brain, where am I gonna find the time in my busy schedule? A kiss stealing, wheeling, dealing, jet plane flying, limousine riding, never napping, weasel slapping, to spare the two minutes it would take to watch the thing with ya. Let's face it, humanoids, the 1991 Packer highlight film could only last about as long as the average duration of the sex act in the Bundy household. Even so, when you're in demand from coast to coast and border to border like the squisher is, a two minute delay like that could cost me thousands, run me into the millions even. Rat-a-tat-tat! So anyway, I tell the kid, look, Mac, forget about all this football piddly squid. Them bums is just a bunch of fanny patting, switch hit patting, drop the ball and huddle calling sissies, anywho. Do the world and yourself a favor and do a story on grappling for the crying out loud. Well, he ain't as dumb as he looks. The kid got us a grappling story. Oh, to be sure, all the wrestlers were scantily clad women rubbing their muscular oiled bodies against each other in a cascade of titillating contact. But hey, every so often I like to get in touch with the feminine aspect of my personality myself. Take my word for it, pretty boys and stumble bums. Pro wrestling is the only real sport on the face of the planet. And if you want to know just how badly football is going under the thunder of wrestling, daddy, here's this steroid taking money making engine of destruction's top 10 reasons why the squared circle beats the pants off the gridiron 10 days a week. Number 10, sissy face masks make it difficult to apply and maintain decent claw hold. Number 9, National Football League god-awful slow in sanctioning Russian chain matches. Number 8 and a half, in a word, handsome Dick Manitoba. Number 8, Bobby the Brain Heenan never did color commentary on a football game. Number 7, Pat the Splat Summerall never did play-by-play -play on a wrestling match. Number 6, California women's hot oil football still strictly a sandlot phenomenon. Number 5 and a half, Wrestlers walk on their tiptoes, don't try no nose, try to stay away from those who care around a fire hose, keep a clean nose, watch the plane close, and above all, don't need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows. Number five, in football, no one ever gets pulled crotch first into a goal post. Number four, no injured football player has ever shot off a confetti cannon into the eyes of his hated rival from the broadcast table. Number three, Sissy Boy Bears fans still act like one body slam on Jim McMahon was a big deal. Number two, if football was cool, John Madden would get beaten up and stuffed inside a weasel suit at least once a year. 
and the number one reason why pro wrestling is football in a pinning predicament. The only time an individual gets handcuffed and beaten by a gang of ruffians with foreign objects during a football game is when the cops catch somebody swearing in the stands. That's all for now. I'll see you in the ring. <sighs> Where does Green Bay rock? The answer is easy. 730 North Quincy, Green Bay, Studio East. Studio East, with live entertainment four nights a week and weekly drink specials. Gather with your friends at Studio East. Count on it every week for the best rock at Studio East. This coming week, Wednesday, the one and only incredible jukebox heroes. Rock with Hard Rock and Aggressor, May 14th and 15th. And Milwaukee Shy Boy will be in town on May 16th. Studio East, 730 North Quincy, Green Bay. JTCDs, with the largest selection in Manitowoc, over 1,000 CDs. We also sell posters, blank audio tapes, cases, and more. We also have a listening area. Listen to your selections before you buy. JTCDs, where most CDs are $5.99 or $7.99. Come and see us soon. We have rock, rap, country, classical, dance, and jazz. We have the CDs you've been looking for. JTCDs, 1013 Washington Street, Manitowoc. Music, it's a way of life. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just a beginner, the staff of the Guitar Cellar gives you the best deals in town on a wide selection of new and used guitars, amps, accessories, and sound gear at discount prices. If you don't see it in stock at the Guitar Cellar, we'll special order it. The Guitar Cellar offers lessons by professional instructors at all levels. Mention this ad for 50% off your next string purchase. Wouldn't you rather play guitar? Now you can at the Guitar Cellar, 2248 University Avenue, Green Bay. Stick around to learn the area's top five selling CDs right now, direct from the Windjammer in Sheboygan and hosted by our own Mr. Barry Neal. It's the search for the sexiest lady in northeastern Wisconsin, the Perfect Ten Search. Well, folks, you've met the contestants, all ten of them. Now we're going to play a little music. They're going to get out here one by one, and they're going to do a little shaky, 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 shaky. So let's start. Contestant number one. Search. This Barb, going for a hundred dollar bar tab here tonight, a chance to win a trip to 20th Century Fox Studios. Contestant number two, Sherry B. And the crowd is going wild. Contestant number five.
working the crowd, ladies and gentlemen. She's working the crowd. indeed. And judges, I see a nine, I see a seven. Oh my word, we have a 23-year barb at nine, seven, seven. Number two, Sherry. Come on down. Oh, two tens and a six. Sherry leads at 26. All right. Okay. And contestant number three, Chris from Manitowoc. That was a nine, not a six? Oh, I lied. She has 29. Okay, nine and two sixes for Chris from Manitowoc. Contestant number four, Karen, step forward. Still leading is number two is 29. Okay. <laughs> okay, that was contestant number four. Number five, Tina, step on down. She's got the walk, folks. Does the walk have it? Can the walk carry? No, it can't. We still have number two in the lead. Contestant number six, Kim. It'll take a perfect score to beat this. Ah, yes indeed. Thank you very much, Kim. Contestant number seven, Sherry. And contestant number eight, Stephanie. I just... That beautiful thing is working for me, I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. A 10, 9, and a 7. Number 9, Kathy. We have a 9, we have a 6, we have another 9, not enough to beat number 2. And contestant number 10, Lisa. A 9, an 8, and an 8. And we have a winner, ladies and gentlemen, from Sheboygan, Wisconsin, it's Sherry B. <laughs> Come on, give her a hand, give her a hand. If I knew how to sing it, I'd sing her a song, but you don't want to hear that. What do you do when you aren't entering contests like this? Uh, well, I work six jobs, and I also go down to Chicago every other week for modeling school at Barbizon. Six jobs and modeling school. Well, I'm glad I don't have to do that. Barry, don't worry about modeling school taking up all your time. Right now, an all-too-brief look at the Perfect Ten Lingerie Show. I'm blinded by love. I'm not 
have to tell my mother about that. It's the search for the sexiest lady in northeastern Wisconsin. It's the Perfect Ten search Thursday, May 14th at Decades in Oshkosh. Wednesday, May 20th at Frankie's in Menasha. Friday, May 29th at Mannequins in Green Bay. And Friday, June 5th at the Windjammer in Sheboygan. Before we leave you tonight, let's find out what music is selling right here in northeastern Wisconsin. The top five brought to you by the exclusive company and Capitol Records featuring their new release from the Beastie Boys, in which we'll get to in just a bit. First of all, at number five, it's Topsoil 1992. Now, all the bands on this CD are from right here in Wisconsin. A band from Green Bay, Inner City Sasquatch on it, also Rockin' Bones, Rebel Waltz. Stop at the exclusive company to find out more about this CD. Coming in at number four, it's Social Distortion, Somewhere Between Heaven and Hell. Number three is Wish from The Cure. Number two, Adrenalize from Def Leppard. And the most sold CD this week at the exclusive company is the Beastie Boys, Check Your Head. Now, they're going to be playing at the Rave in Milwaukee tomorrow night. If you get a chance, go down there and check them out. The top five is brought to you by the exclusive company and also Capitol Records featuring the latest release from the Beastie Boys called Pass the Mic. <laughs> It's the search for the sexiest lady in northeastern Wisconsin. It's the Perfect Ten search. Ladies, you could win your way to Hollywood. Congratulations to last week's winner, Teresa from Green Bay. This week, the Perfect Ten search stops at the Windjammer in Sheboygan. And, of course, on hand all night, Robin, Penny, and Nicole. The it's time for the Entertainer Television Show, a weekly show that profiles the best in entertainment from all throughout northeastern Wisconsin. Plus, this week's competition from the Perfect Ten Search. The search for the sexiest lady in northeastern Wisconsin. Humor from the Rev Norb. The best of in our area and the truly unusual. It's all on The Entertainer. Sunday night, Entertainer Television Show. Rev Norb, Perfect Ten Search, a whole lot more coming up. In our first story tonight, when this band came out originally in the early 70s, they were treated just as much as a circus sideshow as they were a serious rock act. However, the band, KISS, has certainly stood the test of time. Their marquee value is so strong that you can be a copy band of KISS and do extremely well. The proof, the evidence, Strutter, last weekend at the City Center Theater. Exploding like gods of thunder in the mid-70s, came a band like no other. Makeup, six-inch high heels, pyrotechnics, and a stage show larger than life, their name KISS, to bring back the way it used to be before KISS took out the makeup is an incredible tribute band, Strutter. Let's go backstage and meet the guys with the makeup. Did you grow up listening to Kiss, and are they a big influence in your life? Yeah, we grew up listening to it. Uh, not a big influence in our life, maybe, you know, musically. Does it take a lot of work putting on and uh, taking off the makeup? And how long does it take? Uh, it's an hour to put it on, five minutes to take it off. It's a lot easier to take it off. But, you know, it's it's... It's 
doesn't take a lot of time once you did it and did it and did it. You know what I mean? The more we do it, the better we get at it, it seems. So you do your own makeup. You don't have somebody else out actually drawing it on you. No, we do our own. That's actually what Kiss did, too. They drew their own. Yeah, I think so. I've, I've heard lots of people say lots of different things about how they did it. But when they first started out, they did do it themselves. Can you tell me a little about the show and the special effects you have? Okay, we basically do the smoking guitar. We have the pyro, all the pyro, the staging. We have the stairs, the lights, the sign. We have it all. Basically, we do it like Kiss did it. Like they used to put on a show. Right. So it's the show that's it's just really killer. It's fun doing it because there's a lot to it. You know what I mean? It's just not like going up there and banging out some songs, doing your songs, and you're out of there. Look good, you know, and you got the hair and everything else and the attitude. It's more or less like a character, and, and you're presenting that like in a show. So I think it, it becomes very fun. It's different, you know what I mean? It's not just basic rock and roll it's a little bit a step above you could say who does your your wardrobes you pretty much build these yourselves or you have somebody who actually tailors for them? mine was made for me because there's a lot of sewing involved he actually did most of his himself yeah i'm putting a little studs on there it's not too yeah. difficult yeah. but when but it gets to the really sewing we kind of let somebody else do that can we see the tongue bill <laughs> bill what's your favorite song you like performing on stage uh, I'd say, um, I love it loud. Uh, Rocket Ride, but we aren't doing that one tonight, so shock me. One of the biggest show bands of all time. Kiss lives with the energy of Strutter. Glitter Rock at its best with the Entertainer. The search for the sexiest lady in northeastern Wisconsin, the Perfect Ten search from the Windjammer in Sheboygan. It was a great night. It's coming up real quick here. Quickly want to let you know the dates where you can come see the show taped live. It's a lot of fun. This Friday at the 12th, right on Richmond Avenue in Appleton, Mr. Roberts. Mark Perry has a beautiful club. Join us this Friday at Mr. Roberts. After that, east side of Green Bay on the 19th, Club Safari. West side of Green Bay on the 26th, it'll be Mannequins. Then we're back at the Windjammer right before the 4th of July, Friday, July 3rd. Next door neighbors, what are they watching on video right now? The top three video rentals right here in northeastern Wisconsin, courtesy of Blockbuster Video. Let's take a sneak peek at the second most rented video this week at Blockbuster. It's Free Jack, starring Emilio Estevez, Anthony Hopkins, David Johansson, and Mick Jagger. We got him. Let's go. A race car driver is zapped from the present into the future, where he must flee from a wealthy tycoon who wants his healthy body for a mind swap. Why do they want me, Brad? Because you died, man. Spectacularly. Incredible piece of videotape. You should see it sometime. So you're here to help me or what? Yeah. Don't miss a science fiction movie, Free Jack. Come on, Jack. From Dallas, Texas, the Flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. And the story that wouldn't go away comes in at the number one spot this week at Blockbuster Video. It's JFK, starring Kevin Costner, Tommy Lee Jones, Donald Sutherland, and Jack Lemmon. There's a man with a gun. There's absolute... So many cops in that What the hell were they doing? What? Well, no trial now. It's like somebody just saved a Dallas DA a pile of work. Average man be lucky to get two shots off. And I'll tell you, the first shot would always be the best. 
Here, the third shot's perfect. Then they got that crazy bullet zigzagging all over the place, so it hits Kennedy and Connolly seven times. One pristine bullet, that dog don't hunt. You know, something's always bothered me about that from day one, too. This is a true story of New Orleans DA Jim Garrison's investigation into the mysterious circumstances of the JFK assassination, leading to the 1969 trial of Clay Shaw. There is a shelf full of copies of JFK now available at Blockbuster Video. There's such a large demand for this movie the past couple of weeks, but you can get it now, JFK. Later on this month, on June 11th, you can get The Addams Family, and also on the same date, Cuffs will be out. June 25th, Grand Canyon will be released. For the widest selection in movies, just make a stop at a Blockbuster Video near you. Blockbuster Video, Lombardi Plaza and East Town Mall, Green Bay, and Richmond Street, Appleton. Wow, what a difference! Wow. The perfect tent search, so far with ladies competing from Green Bay, Appleton, Oshkosh, Manitowoc, and Sheboygan. It's only just begun. We're looking for the sexiest ladies in northeastern Wisconsin. The perfect tent search rocks into Mr. Roberts on Friday, June 12th. And watch it Sundays at 11 with the Entertainer TV show on Fox 26. Last year, over 1,600 fans of Sun, Fun, and Rock and Roll flocked to the beach for War on the Shore 4. Who knows how many people will join the party this year? Budweiser presents War on the Shore 5, Saturday and Sunday, June 13th and 14th. A dozen bands and all the sun you can soak up on the sandy shores of beautiful Harps Lake, halfway between Manitowoc and Green Bay. Guys, don't miss the Wild Wet T-shirt contest. Ladies, you could win your way to Las Vegas. War on the Shore 5, only two bucks admission, June 13th and 14th on beautiful Harps Lake. Take I-43 to Highway 147 East, turn left at the Paps sign. No carry-ins, ID to drink alcohol, event held rain or shine. Reverend Norb suggests not drinking and driving. Where does Green Bay rock? The answer is easy. 730 North Quincy, Green Bay, Studio East. Studio East, where live entertainment four nights a week and weekly drink specials. Gather with your friends at Studio East. It's a special night with the mega rock band Gemini on Wednesday, June 10th. It's Dam's Rocket, Friday and Saturday, June 12th and 13th. Get electrified now at Studio East, 730 North Quincy, Green Bay. Tom Tett and Ola Hoot, Jeff Barani, Sitting Bird, Shooting Famous Pig Rustlers, how's by you? You know, I couldn't help but noticing that in the space of the last few weeks, a goodly number of large and well-established local nightclubs have scuttled the format that brought them success, instead opting for, you guessed us, Festus, go in country. Club owners, read my lips. You'll be sorry. It's like this. There's a certain percentage of the current country crowd that, for reasons that completely elude me, are true blue dyed in the wool country western nuts. They always have, and they always will, eat, breathe, sleep, spit, and poop country music, which is fine as long as they keep about a mile down wind for me while they do it. But the vast majority of today's country music fans are of the come and go variety. Six months to a year from now, and they'll have abandoned country western for something equally as stimulating, like Needle Pointer Parcheesi. And who can blame them? Oh, but Reverend Norm, how can you speak ill of country music? It's the voice of the American working man. The average everyday schmo who works hard, plays hard, but tries not to think hard about anything. Yeah, sure it is. While modern country does try to preserve its down-home character, the majority of today's country hits are not written by heartbroken part-time truck drivers named Merle. They're dreamed up in smoke-filled corporate boardrooms by middle-aged guys in bad toupees and loud sport jackets named Howie. 
Modern country is even more false and contrived than commercial rock, dance, and top 40. In point of fact, it's on roughly the same level as the new kids on the block. Besides that, it's corny, moralistic, and backward. But who am I to be critical? But don't get me wrong. I think turning your nightclub into a country joint's a great idea. Therefore, here's my top 10 reasons why your nightclub should go country. Number 10, everybody loves a bandwagon jumper. Number 9, tobacco spit good for long-term carpet life. Number 8, country music appeals to a more upscale breed of simpleton than heavy metal. Number 7, for my money, you can't hear Don't Rock the Jukebox too many times in one night. Number 6, open mic night. I mean, think about it. Number five, if country fans have something to do in November, maybe they won't be anywhere near the polls. Number four, mechanical bull draws clientele that you would personally want as your friends. Number three, going country will increase your appeal to that treasured bingo player demographic. Number two, every time the song I Got Friends in Low Places comes on the jukebox, 50 totally sloshed alcoholics will buy another round because Garth Brooks said it's cool. And the number one reason why you should start seriously considering turning your nightclub into a country joint Come on! Anyone can run a club full of young, slim, beautiful women. Be a man! Run a country bar instead! On a closing note, don't try to understand them. Just rope them up and brand them. Ride them, cowboy. bum ba dee da bum ba dee da bum ba dee da bum ba dee da From the pages of The Entertainer, looking to get outdoors this weekend, 12 bands playing right on the beautiful beach at Harps Lake. It's War on the Shore 5. That's this coming weekend, Saturday and Sunday at Harps Lake. What do you do? I-43, you exit 147. Also, this coming Friday, the 12th, used to be Lothario's. It'll open the doors as a hot new contemporary country club, El Paso, this Friday. This Wednesday at Brogan's in the Ramada, it's the interplanetary rhythm, blues, and jazz of the Janet Planet Band. And this Friday, Surf and Bird and Adverse Records present a real live ex-misfit, kids. Body Steel and the Undead at City Center. Also this Saturday, Time Bomb Tom takes a bride. When you're getting off of work this summer, you might want to make a stop at Capone's. Their happy hour between 3 and 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. That's Capone's located on Broadway Street in Green Bay. Remember the Colorado Rockers' Firefall? They had a lot of big hits in the 70s, like You Are the Woman, Just Remember I Love You. Well, they're going to be at the Holiday Inn in Manitowoc on Friday, June 12th. To find out more about this event or anything else happening in the Valley or the Lakeshore, just pick up a copy of The Entertainer. From our personal page, here's our Entertainer Personal of the Week. Wow, do I feel desperate having to place an ad to meet a nice woman. I've exhausted all of the old-fashioned methods, so why not try something different? If you are between 23 and 33, 5 foot 4 or taller, non-smoker with average looks, I want to meet you. Other required qualities include high self-esteem, intelligence, sense of humor, honesty, and a pleasant, easygoing personality. You don't have to feel desperate to answer my ad, just feel the need to meet a nice guy. If you'd like to respond to this personal, write to Entertainer Personals, P.O. Box 8031, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54308-8031, attention. In box H6. For more information on placing a personal, pick up a copy of the Entertainer newspaper. Last year, over 1,600 fans of Sun, Fun, and Rock and Roll flocked to the beach for War on the Shore 4. Who knows how many people will join the party this year? Budweiser presents War on the Shore 5, Saturday and Sunday, June 13th and 14th. A dozen bands and all the sun you can soak up on the sandy shores of beautiful Harps Lake, halfway between Manitowoc and Green Bay. Guys, don't miss the Wild Wet T-shirt contest. Ladies, you could win your way to Las Vegas. War on the Shore 5, only two bucks admission, June 13th and 14th on beautiful Harps Lake. Take I-43 to Highway 147 East, turn left at the PAP sign. No carry-ins, ID to drink alcohol, event held rain or shine. Reverend Nord suggests not drinking and driving. The perfect tent search. So far with ladies competing from Green Bay, Appleton, Oshkosh, Manitowoc, and Sheboygan. It's only just begun. We're looking for the sexiest ladies in northeastern Wisconsin. The perfect tent search rocks into Mr. Roberts on Friday, June 12th. And watch it Sundays at 11 with the Entertainer TV show on Fox 26. JTCDs with the largest selection in Manitowoc, over 1,000 CDs. We also sell posters, blank audio tapes, cases, and more. We also have a listening area. Listen to your selections before you buy. JTCDs, where most CDs are $5.99 or $7.99. Come and see us soon. We have rock, rap, country, classical, dance, and jazz. We have the CDs you've been looking for. 
JTCDs, 1013 Washington Street, Manitowoc. Getting married is a memory of a lifetime, but then again, so is your bachelor or bachelorette party. Make it even more memorable with the help of the main attraction, across from McDonald's on the east side Green Bay. Enjoy a variety of novelties, including interesting table games and other gag gifts that will surely add some spice to your bachelor or bachelorette party. It's that time of the year, and the main attraction has a great selection, from lame to tame, from mild to wild. You only get married once. Well, that's not true. Scratch that. Anyway, your bachelor or bachelorette party will be a memory to savor with the help of the main attraction. The main attraction across from McDonald's on the east side, Green Bay. Direct from the Windjammer in Sheboygan, it's the search for the sexiest lady in northeastern Wisconsin, the Perfect Ten Search. Now, we're going to get them lined up once again and... Uh... Step center stage, do a little dancing for you. Okay? Don't forget, make some noise for your favorites, all right? Mr. Music, will you please play? The perfect tent search. Contestant number one, Debbie, come on down. Yes, indeed, the contestants have shown themselves when they've spoken. 
we have a seven, a seven, and a six. Yes, indeed, folks. Twenty is the combined score. Contestant number one. Thank you. Contestant number two, Nicole. Three sevens, 21. Nicole is in first place. All right, contestant number three. You're from Sheboygan? Right. And what do you do in Sheboygan for fun? I like to go out and dance, be with my friends. Dancing and being with your friends. Well, that sounds like a good time. Now, you were definitely one of the crowd favorites. The moment you took the stage, the crowd erupted. Are those all your friends and relations out there? Some of them are friends, but no relatives. Did that make you feel a little more nervous or did you feel as if uh, you just might be able to take this because the crowd loved you? It made me feel good, but I was really nervous. Yeah. Well, you certainly uh, caught the judges' eyes because they voted you a perfect 10. One of the sexiest women here at Windjammers tonight. Well, Lisa, you were definitely the crowd favorite tonight. Uh, they really, really did enjoy your dancing. Do you like dancing? I love it. That's about the only thing I do. <laughs> I get the feeling you do. You were certainly having a lot of fun here. And I suppose you're a regular here at the Windjammers. Oh, every weekend. This is my home. I live here. <laughs> this is your home. Now, are you happy you entered the contest? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I wish I would have done a little better. but. Well, we'll be back in four weeks. You can enter again. Also on hand, the Perfect Ten Lingerie Show. The Perfect Ten Search Live, Friday, June 12th at Mr. Roberts in Appleton. Friday, June 19th at Club Safari in Green Bay. Friday, June 26th at Mannequins in Green Bay. And Friday, July 3rd at the Windjammer in Sheboygan. Okay, let's find out what music is selling right here in northeastern Wisconsin. The top five brought to you by the exclusive company. A band called L7 with Bricks Are Heavy comes in at number five. At the number four spot this week, it's Check Your Head from the Beastie Boys. The Encino Man soundtrack, a big movie with Pauly Shore. They come in at number three. You might know the song, You're Invited, But Your Friend Can't Come, from Vince Neil from that. Number two, The Black Crows, The Southern Harmony, and Musical Companion. And Kiss sticks at the number one spot this week with Revenge. I'd like to mention the exclusive company will be open tomorrow night at the strike of midnight for the new release from Deicide. 
the exclusive company, the Green Bay location only. The new release from DSI goes on sale Monday at 12 midnight. We're going to leave you with highlights from last week's Battle on the Bay held at the Brown County Fairgrounds in De Pere. Thanks a lot for watching. Good night. Writing bucks and doe eyed vixens, guess what time of year it is? I'll give you a context clue. Damn tootin', Roscoe, it's deer hunting season! Now, personally, I think deer hunting is way cool because half my audience is off sitting in the woods somewhere waiting for something to come by that they can kill, the other half is gleefully stuffing dollar bills into various bulging speedo trunks across the state. Therefore, since no one's really watching, this week's rev up can really suck the old venison loaf. But never mind that. I guess the bottom line is that I won't be participating in any deer slaying frolics this year, much like last year and all the years before that. Yeah, the only deer I ever bagged had to pry off my front grill. But don't get me wrong, if your idea of a good time is dressing up like a Dayglow Elmer Fudd and sitting in the woods waiting to put a slug through something that looks like Bullwinkle, by all means, indulge yourself. We've all got our little quirks, I guess, but what the buck? Be that as it may, please allow me to annotate the top 10 reasons why I won't be doing that male bonding, beer drinking, deer killing thing anytime soon, unless of course my deer whistles fail. Number 10, can't pry myself away from the tube during Greyhound week. Number 9, drug dealers have all the good weapons anyway. Number 8.5, rather shoot a piston or a laker than a buck any old day, thank you. Number 8, temptation to fire off a few impish pot shots at annoying animal rights activists may interfere with clear thinking. Number seven, if I was all dressed up like a gigantic traffic pylon, I'd be embarrassed to be seen in public. Number six and a half, size fetish for male antler rack has legitimately disturbing homoerotic implications. Number six, spent enough time sitting outside for no apparent reason during instant replays at last week's Packer Viking game. Number five, when life begins to resemble a Youper song, it's time to pack it in. Number four, just as soon not throw any critters John Thomas up into a tree for good luck next year if it's all the same to you. Number three, heard the Pope's been pooping up the woods again. Number two, pass out the rifles and everyone's a TV critic. And the number one reason why I won't be going deer hunting this year. Bambi Thad has been rebuilt with bionic parts. He's bigger, he's stronger, he's faster. He looks like a Terminator with a 14-point rack. He's out for blood. He doesn't care about your thunderstick. No man born of woman dares stand before the wrath of the Bambitron. Well, that's it for now. I gotta hit the rack. Ah, good antler, good antler. Ah, oh, dear. <laughs> Do, re, mi. Easiest one, two, three. You wanna buck the tramp? Oh, oh, me so horny. Oh, me so horny. I'm so funny, I can be the next Sam Dennison.
Attention Kmart shoppers and all others heavily involved in the spirit of giving. Another Thanksgiving has come and gone, and I'm sure all you shiny, happy people out there know what that portends. Oh yes, my fellow Americans, that means that Christmas shopping season is in full bloom once again. Now, I'm well aware that you good folks have enough senseless purchasing in front of you already, but hey, in between selecting the right Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle beer bong for Junior and the proper Oleander bath bar set for Grandma, don't forget that lovable soul who's brought so much warmth and joy into your hearts low all these many Sundays. I speak, of course, of myself, the Reverend Norb. No, I won't be getting you anything this Yuletide season. Hell, odds are you're not even on my Christmas card list. But god dang it all, I'm needy and deserving. And what's another mysterious $20 or $30 charge on your credit cards anyway? I mean, it's not like it's real money or anything. Now you can mail those generous gifts to me, care of the entertainer, P.O. Box 8031, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54308-8031. Or if you'd rather send them UPS, the mailing address would be 1270 Main, number 221, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54302. Either way, do be sure to mail early and avoid that pesky holiday rush that may unduly delay my gratification. Now, as you may expect, I'm a pretty easy fella to shop for. However, at the risk of being rude, just let me fill you in on a couple items that I just as soon not see under the tree this year. Number 15, Rockin' Apple Sweats. Number 14, another large stuffed toucan to hang from my bedroom ceiling. Number 13, John Blair brand dress slacks featuring year-round comfort with new whisper fabric of woven Daycron polyester for a softer, more natural feel. Number 12, Frank's Quality Croak Juice. Number 11, Annoying Dangle-Inducing Boxer Shorts. Number 10, Best of the Grateful Dead, one CD, if that box set. Number 9, Fully Posable 12-inch Brad Spackowitz action figure. Number 8, Big Button Stylish Phone. Number 7, any condom engineered for a slimmer fit. Number six, Packers 91, Road to the Super Bowl video. Number five, any type of fruitcake, especially the really butch ones. Number four, high dome 10 inch cover and aluminum saute pan. Number three, man form kielbasa novelties. Number two, vial of tetracycline and note of apology. And the number one present I just as soon not find under my tree this Christmas. Free reconnection to AT&T long distance service. And you know, it's not that I really mind their product so much, it's just that I hate being the second most annoying force on TV today. You're not dealing with AT&T. Hey, 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 hey there, gossip hounds, rumor mongers, and busybodies of every creed and color. Have you heard the latest fast-breaking scandal that's been making the rounds? Well, for the benefit of the one or two of you out there that haven't, it goes something like this. A local pizza delivery guy allegedly brought an order over to a local high-profile, high-money, high-plan B sports figures house recently, and supposedly when he got there, the door was opened by a certain TV weatherman who was reportedly clad in nothing but a pair of silk bikini briefs. How's that for irresponsible journalism? Of course, you can believe or disbelieve this tall tale of male bondage as you see fit, but do bear one thing in mind. Before I landed this prestigious gig, I used to be a swinging pizza guy myself. I won't mention where I work, but I do know that they've got one cold, beer-headed driver currently in their employ. Now, pizza dudes are seldom renowned for their sterling character. In fact, one has to take much of what they say with a grain of salt, especially phrases like, gee, this pizza's only 29 minutes old by my watch. I don't know, you know, damn $3, or I can't get up to work today, my radiator fell out, or why no, I wasn't drinking. So, bearing in mind the pizza driver's natural proclivity towards half-truths, here's a list of my most noteworthy experiences as a pizza guy, half of which are guaranteed to be absolutely true. <laughs> Number 10, stiffed by fat guy at WIXX after he spent 10 minutes on the phone pleading for an on-air personality discount. Number 9, delivered pizzas to desolate fog hat tour bus, where I spent 10 minutes trying to get paid and keeping them company, hoping they wouldn't fill me in on how they got their name. Number 8, delivered pizzas to LA Guns tour bus, which is basically one big cloud of underage girls, fishnet stockings, and marijuana smoke. I was not asked to board this bus. Number 7, received whopping 4 cent tip from Packer B team player Steve Collier, who also utilized an invalid coupon. Since he was 8 feet tall, 400 pounds, with fingers as big as Milky Way bars, I wisely let the incident slide. Number 6, delivered 40 pie orders to Baptist Youth Group sleepover at 2 in the morning, with the minister in charge refusing to pay the bill until everybody said grace. Number five, delivered pizzas to a local meteorologist house, door opened by Freddie Mercury in Bohemian Rhapsody era body stocking. Number four, delivered pizzas to former Packer head coach's house, door was opened by a scantily clad Buddy Ryan. Of course, the whole thing turned out to be a prank order phoned in by Mike Tomzak. Number three, tried unsuccessfully to convince former Packers general manager that what future he had lay in the field of pizza delivery. Number two, failed to provide a reasonable explanation as to why it took me three hours to locate customer who phoned in order from defunct local massage parlor. And number one on my top ten list of half-true pizza anecdotes, 
Delivered double anchovy pizza to the local TV anchor woman's house. Door opened by anchor woman from rival station dressed in nothing but men's athletic supporter. All kidding aside, though, you really can't believe every half-baked rumor that goes around. I mean, remember that old one about Rod Stewart, how he collapsed on stage and they rushed him to the hospital and the doctors pumped his stomach and lo and behold, they found like a quart of a certain organic fluid which we can't even mention on television? Ah, mule fritters. That's the most completely irrational, ridiculous, and ill-founded thing I've ever heard in my life. It couldn't have been less than a gallon. Yo, Houseville Postal customers and other oppressed peoples of the world, I was just reading in the Green Bay News Chronicle about an interesting occurrence to take place recently at the Columbus, Ohio Post Office. Why, it seems that an impish technician, after running a routine systems check, forgot to delete a test message from the postal computer system. This resulted in a p p pesky bonus phrase being accidentally printed on some 12,000 pieces of mail before it was caught. The perky little holiday greeting in question? I quote, You bitch! Now I know what you're thinking. Gosh, Reverend Norb, that's mighty mortifying and such like, but how does a naughty technician's boo-boo in Columbus, Ohio, affect me, Al Franken? Well, I recently received a long-delayed letter from someone in San Diego. The reason for the holdup? According to the message on the outside of the envelope, the letter was tardy due to the fact that it was missent to Manila. And, as you can plainly see, it wasn't even in a Manila envelope to begin with. Therefore, if a letter sent from point A, San Diego, to point B, Green Bay, can wind up in point C, the freaking Philippines, it's not inconceivable that the Christmas card you sent across town to your grandma could have detoured to Columbus, Ohio just long enough to come back and be on her doorstep with the phrase, YOU BITCH, printed across the front. Ye gad. And you think grandma is going to really buy some far-fetched yarn about your letter winding up in the hands of some practical joker public sector employee in Ohio? Not. Nah, she'll probably wash her mouth out with palm olive as soon as look at ya. But hey, it could be worse. Just to wallow in the aftermath of tragedies barely avoided, here's my top ten list of phrases even worse than you bitch to have accidentally printed on your Christmas card to, 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 to grandma. Number ten, you bitch, you slut, you whore. Number nine, die, grandma, die. Number eight, ow, my hinder. Number seven, who cut the cheese. Number six, your grandson works for the entertainer. Number five, long live the glorious communist revolution. Number four, Satan commands, bring me the head of Wilford Brimley in a Ziploc bag. Number three, genitals, genitals, genitals. Number two, this is a Christmas card from a homosexual. And the absolute worst phrase that you want some misguided postal ambassador from Ohio to print on your grandma's Christmas card. Hey, grandma, I do drugs all the time. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go get a spanking. Hope she doesn't use a stick. Every shape, stripe, and color, one day's full of... Greetings and incarceration, investment bankers, two-bit con men, and the rest of the criminal element. By now, you've probably noticed that the zillion-dollar voice on this show's delightful Personal of the Week segment is none other than my own dulcet, pear-shaped tones. Why do we do it? Well, I suspect I was nominated to read the ever pulse pounding personal of the week simply to break my spirit, but that's beside the point. Why some loose cannon invented the personal of the week, of course, was to stimulate business in the entertainer newspaper's personal section. The theory being that me, reading a selected goodie from the personals page in my six foot, hot look, all American, manliest voice would send viewer hormones on such a rampage of lust that folks would be dashing off personals left and right in hopes of quenching those fires down below. Sound judgment, to be sure. Now, while the sound of my molten golden throat has sent untold zillions dashing off to the mailbox, there's one specific demographic where the entertainer personals have been strong since day one. I speak, of course, of our captive audience, no place else but the G -G 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 Green Bay Correctional Institution. Why, nary a day goes by that we don't receive a card or a letter from these fine folks, and believe you me, they needed no oral prodding from yours truly to explore the slyly serendipitous world of entertainer personals. Sad thing is, we hardly ever have the time to answer their mail. Sorry, dudes, but we have TV shows and newspapers to produce, not to mention women to hang around. If it's any comfort, however, life sucks almost as badly out here as it does in there. And just so as you don't hunt me down and slit my throat upon release, here's the top ten reasons why life inside the Green Bay Correctional Institute is almost as swell as life on the outside. Number ten, been a long time since anyone named Rico purchased my services for a pack of camels. Number nine, Wednesday's meatloaf menu kicks butt on my usual fare of little Deddy Duncan sticks and Diet Pepsi. Number eight, imprisonment takes most of the hassle out of Christmas shopping. Number seven, going to the bathroom unobserved gets old fast. 
Number six, rodeo ticket telemarketers rarely pester the incarcerated. Number five, look on the bright side. Nobody's going to talk you into renting Madonna, truth or dare. Number four, dropping the soap in the shower at home, just not the same. Number three, uh, number four, dropping the soap in the shower at home, just not the same. Number three, never underestimate the value of 24-hour discount tattooing. Number two, prison job hourly wage of 25 cents, now in line with most post-Reaganomics entry-level position pay scales. And the number one reason why life behind those ivy-covered walls of the Green Bay Correctional Institution is almost as good as life here on the outside. All those jailers are taken to rounding up prisoners, hurting them outside into sub-zero temperatures and forcing them to sit on a frozen aluminum bench while unspeakable atrocities take place before their eyes. Jail couldn't possibly be any worse than attending last week's Packer Lion game! Well, thanks for your time, but I really gotta get back to our printing presses. We're running low on 50s. Coming, Al! Shoppers, mobbers, bottle stoppers, copper tops, and soccer mobbers, I'm back! And you do the heavy glass of your picture tube, I can psychically sense the question moving large in your mind. Gosh, Reverend Norm, have you been away? Horribly enough, yes. Confidentially and furthermore, this show hasn't been on the air in like four months. Shocking, isn't it? I mean, one day we're on the air asking the guy who's putting the Christmas decorations on the lamppost to flip us off. The next day, Channel 32 goes belly up. The people who own the rights to the dating game threaten to haul us into court and beat us like a gong. And the next day, we're suddenly off the air and sucking up to 26. Though I personally didn't do any of the sucking. Now, getting back on the air was no mean feat since 26, our new friends, got most of 32's programming. They had shows up the wazoo to run. A situation not unlike, say, putting 10 pounds of potatoes in a 5-pound sack. Or 5 pounds of tomatoes in a 1-quart mason jar. Or Courtney Cleaverton and Sinead O'Connor's brassiere, for that matter. But anyway... But anyway, the important thing, and I'm sure you'll agree, is that we're back on TV. And if you don't believe there was a lot of competition for the few available air slots on TV 26, here's just the top 10 top quality TV shows the Entertainer TV show had to beat out for this choice broadcast gig. Number 10, Ask Dr. Mandrich. Number 9, the old announcer for the Greyhound Week TV show's half-hour comedy hour. Number 8, Bowling for Plate Glass. Number 7 and a half, Bowling on Rocky. Number 7, Minnow Racing Week. Number 6, Stud. Number 5... 26? 26? They, they put that show on the air? 26 does? Really? Freak out. Uh, number 6, Pass. Number 5, Old Sarge's Enema House. Number four, Chuck Ramsey's Cavalcade of Whimsy. Number three, Dunk Tank Week. Number two, Brad and Don's Leather Weather. And the television show most narrowly beaten up by the quote-unquote new and improved entertainer TV show. Shane's World. Shane's World. Shane's World. Shane's World. Hey Shane, do you know that you have some dog crap on your shoe that came from a pooch that Alice Cooper once patted on the head during his 1980 Flush the Fashion North American tour? Oh, excellent. Party on. We're in the basement, laying with our toy. I you do not like it, you're a factor boy. Well, that's all for now, citizens of TV land. We've got to go prepare for our next copyright infringement lawsuit. See you in court. Don't look at my butt. You have... All right, you unsuspecting swine huns of America. Put on that bag of chips you're sticking in your yap and pay heed to the words of the tower of power too sweet to be sour. The man with the million dollar face. The squisher. Now, the other day, my advisor, Shane the Brain Reno, says to me, Squisher, he says, let's go to the Packer Hall of Fame and do a story. I mean, they're premiering the Packers' 1991 highlight film, and admission is free. Now, Shady Shane's got his heart in the right place, but right away, I gotta lower the boom on him. Brain, I says, Brain, where am I gonna find the time in my busy schedule?
schedule. A kiss dealing, wheeling, dealing, jet plane flying, limousine riding, never napping, weasel slapping. To spare the two minutes it would take to watch the thing with ya. Let's face it, humanoids, the 1991 Packer highlight film could only last about as long as the average duration of the sex act in the Bundy household. Even so, when you're in demand from coast to coast and border to border like the squisher is, a two-minute delay like that could cost me thousands, run me into the millions even. Rat-a-tat-tat. So anyway, I tell the kid, look, Mac, forget about all this football piddly squid. Them bums is just a bunch of fanny patting, switch hit patting, drop the ball and huddle calling sissies, anywho. Do the world and yourself a favor and do a story on grappling for the crying out loud. Well, he ain't as dumb as he looks. The kid got us a grappling story. Oh, to be sure, all the wrestlers were scantily clad women running their muscular oiled bodies against each other in a cascade of titillating contact. But hey, every so often I like to get in touch with the feminine aspect of my personality myself. Take my word for it, pretty boys and stumble bums. Pro wrestling is the only real sport on the face of the planet. And if you want to know just how badly football is going under the thunder of wrestling, daddy, here's this steroid taking money making engine of destructions. Top 10 reasons why the squared circle beats the pants off the gridiron 10 days a week. Number 10, sissy face masks make it difficult to apply and maintain decent claw hold. Number 9, National Football League god-awful slow in sanctioning Russian chain matches. Number 8 and a half, in a word, handsome Dick Manitoba. Number 8, Bobby the Brain Heenan never did color commentary on a football game. Number 7, Pat the Splat Summerall never did play-by-play -play on a wrestling match. Number 6, California women's hot oil football still strictly a sandlot phenomenon. Number 5 and a half, Wrestlers walk on their tiptoes, don't try no nose, try to stay away from those who carry around a fire hose, keep a clean nose, watch the plane clothes, and above all, don't need a weatherman to know which way the wind blows. <sighs> Number five, in football, no one ever gets pulled crotch first into a goal post. Number four, no injured football player has ever shot off a confetti cannon into the eyes of his hated rival from the broadcast table. Number three, Sissy Boy Bears fans still act like one body slam on Jim McMahon was a big deal. Number two, if football was cool, John Madden would get beaten up and stuffed inside a weasel suit at least once a year. And the number one reason why pro wrestling has football in a pinning predicament. The only time an individual gets handcuffed and beaten by a gang of ruffians with foreign objects during a football game is when the cops catch somebody swearing in the stands. That's all for now. I'll see you in the ring. <sighs> Submitted for your approval, a poem by the Reverend Norb, entitled, Alas, Megabox. <clears throat> I am the Reverend Norbert. I drink Boku caffeine. It keeps me feeling hyper, edgy, talkative, and mean. I don't partake of coffee. It's too grown up a drink. So I drink Diet Pepsi till my teeth turn brown and stink. Now, I don't buy it by the can. Cans cost you half a dollar. Two liter bottles soon go flat, which makes one scream and holler. I purchase eight pack bottles, 16 ounces, dime deposit. The empties soon accumulate and clutter up my closet. So to the grocery store I go to get me back my money. I find a scene that's most unkeen. Indeed, it is not funny. Now to the service counter, there's a mile long waiting line. I want to get my cash and split. Ain't got this kind of time. Why are so many people here? This line gives me a rash. It's not the first day of the month. No welfare checks to cash. I want my 80 pennies back. I want them back too sweet. Is someone at the service desk these dweebs all want to meet? I want to cash these in, I shout. They're due back at the bottlery. Shut up and wait your turn, they yell. We're trying to play the lottery. So that's the deal, I loudly squeal, the cause for this delay. I'm forced to wait behind you lot whilst Powerball you play. I don't think I should have to wait to bring back my returnables. While all you lazy loafers toss your cash in with the burnables, I should get special treatment. I'm conserving Earth's resources. Why don't you split for Arlington and go and play the horses? I mean, I've got a vice or two. I'm not all that above it. But on the whole, you guys are lame. Then they tell me to shove it. I holler, full filthy bums, your cash you blindly squander. 
then hit a passers-by for dimes whilst through them all you wander. Our economy's grown to a halt. We're stung with fiscal rickets. Cause half our nation's cash and time is spent on lotto tickets. You buy these tickets by the score. You seldom ever win. But when you do, you take the cash and play the game again. Why must I sit in line all day behind you mental midgets? You've no imagination. The computer picks your digits. Why don't you put this money towards your children's education? Or food, or books, or socks and shoes, or sacks of kennel ration? Why, way back in the olden days, folks saved the cash they got. Now every night at 10 p.m., you win two million. Not. So saying thus, I headed home. I cashed in not a bottle. For if I'd stuck around, I knew some pear-shaped slob I'd throttle. And of the eight-pack bottle, I shall never drink again. For after all, this day and age, you don't know where they've been. And at the store, they're back for more. The super cash lobotomy. The trade imbalance would be solved if the Japanese played the lottery. And when they call U.S. workers soft, they'll hole and drool and pick it. And bet their bottom dollar on a double moolah ticket. Aloha, stick ripping gremlins and hoedads of a more general nature. Surf's up! Indeed, we're rapidly closing in on summertime, summertime, some, some, summertime, and as the mercury theoretically rises, those oh so familiar scents of summer's past begin to engage our nostrils once again. Ah, the smell of copper tone on a tan young flank. Ah, the smell of that first bag of cotton candy of the year, which Shane Reno considers almost as good as sex. Ah, hot asphalt and warm bicycle seats. And, lest we forget, Ah, the overpowering stench of cat urine. But Reverend Norv, you stammer, you've no cat. In point of fact, you hate the rancid little buggers. Why for all this talk about the odious reek of cat pee, then? Well, it's true. I'm no cat owner, nor do I ever intend to be. But from time to time, I've had to share living quarters with roommates of one type or another. Roommates with, disgust you to say it, cats. The traditional get-to-know-you present from these filthy, wretched beasts has generally been a load of acrid tinkle surreptitiously deposited on my sofa. And, come the summer months, the residue from this litany of kitty bladders comes billowing from the couch, rising like steam off a tranquil yet smelly Finnish bay. Damn good thing I made the switch to fashionable functional magahide. My roommates all took the position that Kitty peed on the couch because he knows that you don't like him. To which I replied, I had nothing against the vile little beast until he whizzed on all my material possessions. Although, when you think about it, storing a box full of cat feces in your house is a pretty twisted deal. Anyway, you may not like me, you may not like what I have to say about cats, you may not have even liked last week's poem, damn you anyway, but there's one thing on this planet that you can't not like. My new pet, Spam the Bunny. And just for jolly, Spam and I have concocted our top ten reasons why bunnies make better pets than cats, besides the obvious reason that they're about eight million times cuter. Number ten, bunnies rarely taken with the urge to cough up hairballs on your chest at five in the morning. Number nine, a bunny won't pee on the floor because he feels threatened by somebody you brought home from the bars at 2 a.m. Number eight, cat role models insipid self-centered blunderers like Sylvester, Tom, and Garfield. Bunnies have savvy showstoppers like bugs to emulate. Number seven, you'd be surprised how good an Easter basket you can get once you have the right connections. Number six, the old rabbit bean in the trail mix gag. Number five and a half, natural proficiency in rabbit punches make Bunny excellent choice for a position of enforcer. Number five, if your rabbit escapes, you can take comfort in the fact that drivers will swerve to miss a bunny. On the other hand, motorists will drive up onto the sidewalk and into your yard if they think they have a chance of greasing a stray cat. Number four, bunnies won't contract uremia just to annoy you. Number three, greatest cinematic role by a feline was in the Disney film That Darn Cat. Bunny screen appearances as Trojan Rabbit and Killer Bunny in Monty Python and the Holy Grail, much more sophisticated. Number two, while the celebrated sexual prowess of the bunny is a part of our national vocabulary, they generally do not include visitors' legs as objects of their affections. And the number one reason why bunnies make better pets than cats, rabbits eat a certain portion of their own bowel movements, which is more help in keeping the house clean than you'll ever get from a cat. Well, we've got a split for the beach, but do remember, I could have named my bunny Carlos. Hey. Say hey!
Hey, groovers, movers, upright hoovers, pickle pumps, and window louvers. It's me, the patron saint of face. Lace, fuzzy dice, bad advice, and minute rice. Back with a stack of black shellac to get you rocking and reeling like Auckland, New Zealand, cousin. And after watching this week's story on late night radio, I felt that I had to wipe a bitter tear from my eye. No, I wasn't weeping over the trauma of seeing WAPL portrayed in a positive light on our show, though that does cut me to the quick. Instead, I was lamenting the fact that once upon a time, kind of, sort of, in a way, I used to be a late night radio DJ myself. Shocking, but true. For two years, I'm in the 10 to 2 slot Sunday nights on WGBW, the radio station that tries to trouble you. Of course, since it was the UWGB college station, I didn't get paid, but then again, getting paid has never been a big part of being a disc jockey. Now I know what you're thinking, Reverend Norb, a pretty face like yours should not be hidden behind a radio announcer's microphone. Leave that aura of mystery to people like APL's Rick and Len, who really need the anonymity. You must have gotten into television just to capitalize on your rugged good looks, eh? Sadly, no. Since, in my own humble estimation, I was the best damn DJ to ever pilot Planet Earth's airwaves, mainly because my taste in music is so much better than everybody else's, I would have been more than happy to stay on the radio from now till doomsday, depriving you all of my million dollar kisser. Unfortunately, if you've ever listened to commercial radio, you know that playing cool music on the air is a violation of FCC broadcast policies. Therefore, the station was sold to Wisconsin Public Radio, meaning that anybody that didn't drive a Volvo and go to the opera regularly was out. So, for my final show, I and a fellow DJ did what anybody with even trace amounts of testosterone in their bloodstream would have done. We cursed. On the air. Horrified listeners who expected something a little more wholesome like a reading of the new James Mishner novel narked on us, and we were removed from the station by uniformed security guards. Now, I can't tell you exactly what I said, because if I did, you'd be seeing something like this next week. But in the July 10th, 1989 edition of the New York Times, I'm quoted as calling it a few choice expletives. In hindsight, I feel pretty bad about it. Since we got shut down early, I didn't get to say everything I wanted to say. So, if you will, here's Reverend Norb's top 10 things he wishes he'd said on the air, but never got a chance to. Number 10, the F word, the S word, the P word, two C words, the M word, and the T word. Oh, did not say, did not say, did not say. Number 10, cart from. Number 9, I feel so tired, listless, and useless out here, I should be working for a country station. Number 8, cars 1 through 500 on the studio lines are instant winners. Come on down to the station between 2 and 5 a.m. to pick out your prize. No one will be here, but I'll leave the door unlocked. Number seven, remember kids, just say, well, maybe this once if all my friends are doing it. Number six, University Chancellor David Outcault is the guy that's been leaving bike tracks in your flower beds every morning. Here's his own phone number. Number five, repeat, the Martians have landed. The Martians have landed, this time for real. Shoot your family first, then yourself. Number four, damn, but the record library always smells like an opium den once those classical music DJs come out. Number three, mayday, mayday, this radio station is merely a front for a mafia-controlled white slavery ring. I'm a dead man, but in pity's name, save the women, man! Number two, Bernard, have you misplaced the station manager's tube of KY Jelly again? And the number one thing I really wish I would have thought to have said on the air, uh, excuse me, officer, but I understand there's free donuts in the cafeteria tonight. Remember, kids, free speech and nonviolent social protest is what made this country great. But don't try it yourself. Hey, is that the new Richard Marx song playing? Follow the rock world at all, you're well aware that recent success by bands like Nirvana, Pearl Jam, and Soundgarden have made Seattle the new center of the universe as far as record labels are concerned. In the mid-80s, Minneapolis was the hot spot. Before that, Athens, Georgia. While where to find the next musical hotbed is anybody's guess, traditionally most people do not guess Wisconsin. Jeff Werner and Mark Hillstrom of Man of the Walk's own Erosion Records see it otherwise. Erosion has recently released the compilation CD Topsoil, featuring 22 different Wisconsin bands. It started off as an album, as a 12-inch exactly. final piece, but we, we, we came up with too, too many bands. And Way then the many. thought occurred, okay, why not step over that line into the current the digital popular world. form of uh, music consumption and experience digitalization? We were very scared. I was frightened. You know, people will question a the tape, they go, Oh, is it just a tape? Y yeah, well, it's just a tape, you know? And that's like, the public is consumed with technology and technological advances, and, you know, and it's like, a lot of people are buying discs only. It's like, if it's on disc, it's legitimate. So it's right. like the latest thing. It's like when you used to make a tape and you wanted to be on vinyl, because that was legitimate. Tapes were like, oh, that's like a tape. You could have made it in your basement. How do I know you spent $10,000 on that? Not 
that one person that's bought it, no matter what their musical taste have not found something they like on it. Right. I mean, I haven't anyone say, there's, there's usually something every single find. thing sucks, I want my money back. Right. Everyone said, at the very least, well, this was really good. I mean, this is good enough to own it in its own right. <laughs> And the thing is that most people don't understand that there is a lot of really good local talent. It's it, the mentality of conformity that like uh, overrules like the legitimacy of a local act over someone that comes from California in a big bus. You know, like they've got to be better. They're just, automatically better. They're automatically something. You are just nothing. trying nothing. <laughs> In this area, you don't have commercial radio really uh, looking into the local scene on any level. I mean, they always come up with the simple excuses, well, we don't play tapes. But, I mean, they can card them up. I mean, they could, you know, easily put a little effort to, into it and do something. I mean, the big metropolises do it. I mean, they have to do it because there's a demand. There's a demand here. It could be fostered and, like, you know, promoted a slight, to a slight extent, and they could find, you know, positive results if they would invest. But, well, just, that remains to be seen. <laughs> Just goes to show that Wisconsin rocks. It always goes back to that Wisconsin rocks. Rocks. Through milk. Are also featuring Death Ball, Num Nums, Dark Entity, Wicked Faith, Immortal Aggression, Disfigured, and more. That's Metal Marathon 2, Thursday, October 24th, City Center Theater, Green Bay. It's an all ages show, bar with ID, City Center Theater. Old Man Winter's just around the corner, and if you've got nothing to keep you warm but flannel sheets, it might be time to give the entertainer personals a try. The Entertainer is a weekly entertainment newspaper distributed free at over 460 locations throughout the greater northeastern Wisconsin area, including taverns, nightclubs, convenience stores, restaurants, supermarkets, and hotels. The Entertainer's personal ads work as follows. Send us your ad using about 30 words to describe yourself, along with payment of $10. We will assign you a box number and publish your ad in the next four weekly issues of The Entertainer. Every week we will collect the responses sent into your box number and, in turn, mail them directly to you at no additional cost. We will not release your name or address. It's a fun, easy, and safe way to meet people. Entertainer Personals, P.O. Box 8031, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54308-8031. Once again, that's Entertainer Personals, P.O. Box 8031, Green Bay, Wisconsin, 54308-8031. Conventional wisdom dictates that most trends begin on the coasts and work their way into the heartland. The entertainer, however, recently got a jump on the next, next big thing, namely, Dirtball Rock. From the town rigger in Manitowoc, here's our exclusive coverage of this rock sensation sweeping the nation and the band behind it, The Meats, direct from the town rigger's second anniversary bash. Many of you are probably wondering what Dirtball Rock is. Well, if there's a tune out there, this band can butcher it. Uh, we are the original Dirtbag Brothers. We've uh, learned how to play Dirtbag music uh, from, what, Jack's Beer Garden in Manitowoc? Let's give them a sneer. Now these other guys are a bunch of phonies. Kenny and I are the only meat cutters here. I work at Super Value, he's from Cop. She does one hell of a job too. I have my scepter in my hand and we are just gonna get down the rest of the night. The rest of the night we're gonna get down. 
Uh, I'm going to turn this over to my big brother, Wolfgang. Papa, ooh, mau, mau. Son, you didn't work a lick. So that's the one I'm doing. I don't know how to do it. There ain't no cure for the summertime. Hey! Best believe me, the meat is where it is at. I guess you can't beat that. and Barry's forbidden love child, Emmanuel Lewis, doing quite well for himself. In closing, we salute Greg Brady, the only teenage boy in America whose sheets were dirtier when his mother left his bedroom than they were when she came in. By now, even really uncool people know how Punk's original explosion in 1977 kicked the living daylights out of a hideously complacent music scene. But by the end of the decade, most of the initial energy of the movement was spent, and it wasn't until the early 80s that the punk thing got a full head of steam behind it again, courtesy of a whole new wave of bands. For better or for worse, one of the new regime in the UK was the Exploited, known for their humongous mohawks and diminutive musical abilities. Trooping on fearlessly, we cornered the band singer, Waddy, backstage after their show at City Center Theatre. So, heck, we're here with Waddy from the Exploited. How long have you been at this, this punk rock stuff now? Yeah, uh, too long. Uh... I've been in the golf since uh, 81, 1981. Okay. That's when punks were punks. That's right. The new album, The Massacre, it's in your shops, go and buy it. It's absolutely brilliant. Etc. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Yeah, suicidal posed out, they're posers, man. Exploit is real punk. So, uh, what would you do if you were invisible for a day? I sneak into the girls' changing rooms as usual. <laughs> like their music, barely understand the words. That's so great because it's awesome. And then they're like their hawks. If that dude had his red hawk up, that'd be great. It'd be awesome. But he doesn't. But still. A lot of people think we come from England, which is wrong, because we come from Scotland. Actually, I'm here because I'm part of the crew and I didn't have to pay any money to get in. 
So what the heck? What do you, what do you think of Wisconsin so far? Do you want an honest answer? Oh, please. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Green Bay Packers suck big time. <laughs> About two years ago when I was a DJ at a college radio station, there was a rumor going around that you, that you had killed yourself by dosing yourself with gasoline and lighting it on fire. Did you no, ever hear anything that, like that? That was, a, that was a guitarist. <laughs> He never died. He was in the he was hospital for six months in the burns unit. Crispy bacon from here to here. Aye. Right? Crispy brown, crispy bacon. Yeah, he deserved it because he was a. So, are you planning on wearing a mohawk for the rest of your natural life? No. <laughs> right, do you have anything else you'd like to say? Chicago Bears, go kick ass the fridge. Oh heck. Well, I've heard of Scottish Highlanders. This guy must be a Scottish Flatlander. Green Bay Packers suck big time. The Entertainer presents the meeting game live for the first time ever in Green Bay. The meeting game will be at Club Safari on Thursday, December 5th with a special celebrity date. Gentlemen, you could have the opportunity to win a date with Hustler Magazine's own Courtney Cleavage. That's the meeting game at Club Safari Thursday, December 5th with special celebrity date Courtney Cleavage. Don't you dare miss it. Once again, that's the meeting game live with Courtney Cleavage this Thursday, December 5th at Club Safari, 231 Elizabeth Street, Green Bay. Don't worry, ladies, we'll have a suitable male contestant for you to pursue as well. Gotta blow lunch if I hear silent lucidity. Pull out of my glass, hip hop gigolo. Bad to the bone like Bam Bam Bigelow. Swear on the air and then I get a sermon. Went to the movies with Pee Wee Herman. On the TV the same night as Al Bundy. Get out of my way or I'll give you a Grundy. You never catch me if you're wanting to rumble. I slip through your grasp like a fat pack of fumble. You rever and know, then you know I'm lame because I just ain't as cool as that damn maiden game. Boom. Boom, boom, chee, chee. Oi. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, chaka, laka, laka. Boom, chaka, laka, laka. Boom, chaka, boom, chaka. Boom, chaka, laka, laka. Boom, chaka, laka, laka. Boom, chaka, laka, laka. Boom. Straight out of Compton. Boom, boom, boom. Believe it or not, there are some areas of the country where polka music is almost unheard of. In backwards places like California, the polka's only exposure has been via so-called punk polka bands such as Brave Combo and Polka Side. Northeastern Wisconsin, of course, remained a bastion of only the traditional polka sound until the blockbuster debut released by the Happy Schnapps Combo. Entitled 100 Proof, the band's self-professed polka rap sound has been heard on radio stations from Hard Rock WAPL to Kiwani's AM Polka Station WAUN. Always more than willing to cover the next, next big thing, we headed on down to the Fat Seagull in Manitowoc to catch the Polka Rebellion instigated by Schnapsomania. Well, my name is Wolfgang, I'm a tourist man, and I drink a lot of beer just as fast as I can. I like it in the bottle, I like it in the glass, I like it anyway, you can bet your... Wolfgang! <laughs> Wolfgang, what is it that makes you play the polka? Well, you see, it's the beat, it's the beat. That makes you move your feet. Polkas are the only way to go. That's right, I'm walking and I play the bass that makes me so wild in this funky place. So if you want to party, you have a real good time. Just listen to me rapping, you'll feel real fine. Pump it up, pump it up. We're going to have to shout combo polka rap. Ooh, pump it up, pump it up. We're going to have to shout combo polka rap. Wolfgang, I gotta ask you one question. Can you repeat the alphabet backwards? Nine. Yo, my name is Hep. I'd like another. You can't like your face as much as my brother. The Jaeger, my stars, and my bot too. I'm getting real thick, just rapping to you. Pump it up. Pump it up. Helmet, why'd your mom and dad name you Helmet? They put a bowl on my head and they called me Helmet. Ah, and I suppose, I suppose the plates and the skull came later, eh? Oh, yes. Yo, my name is Horst and I usually don't drink because then it gets too hard to think. And when the boys get thrown in jail, someone's got to pay the bill. Pump it up, pump it up. 
Well, well, which of the songs of the Happy Schnapps combo play today means the most to you inside your heart, and why is that? Platz and Sauerkraut reminds me of every Sunday morning after being out Saturday night. That's why right, I'm hoist and I play the harp. Now I can play it flat or I can play it sharp. I can make it roar like a hurricane. Don't you ever forget my name. Pump it up, pump it up with the Happy Schnapps combo pulls around. Pump it up, pump it up with the Happy Schnapps combo pulls around. So what do, what do you look for in a woman there, Horst? Well, if she can keep up, do like a pickled egg to every time I do a shot of schnapps. That's the kind of woman that I want. You know, my name is Wernigler with Scorpio. I love to drink just to let you know. The Hunter Fruit Schnapps, the Boots Farm Wine, give it all to me. It's a mighty fine time. Pump it up, pump it up. It's the power of the earth, yes. Now, when it's not Polka Sunday, what do you do the other six days of the week? Well, I don't drink all the time. Sometimes I puke. That's right, there are ones when I play the beats that makes you liquor, tap your feet. So if you want some really good advice for nothing, hey, are you losers, star sucker! Any news on the impending tag team match against the Youpers? Oh, four Youpers will be defeated. Oh, yes. They're not in our class at all. She's too fat for me. She's too fat for me. No, oh, I don't want her. You can't have her. She's too fat for me. She's too fat. She's too fat. She's too fat for me. Hey! What were you drinking the night that you posed for the album cover photograph? <laughs> oh, name it. I did it. Remember, were you the masked wrestler that broke Alvin Stachinsky's leg in the last Polka Rumble? Hey, don't talk about Alvin Stachinsky to me. He is not the real thing. We are the real thing. We are the schnapps. And we can out drink Alvin any day of the week. We will drink the Youpers under the table any day of the year. No, I'll drive them. I'll drive them all the way back to Upper Michigan, yes. And any timely closing messages, guys? <laughs> Thank you. First year, we, uh, the Bears lost, and I had to go back to work with a half a beard on, and I work construction, and we were working in New Holstein at a grade school, and I was walking down the hall doing my job, and a uh, teacher walked out, and uh, she took a double take, and it was pretty hilarious watching her. Brand new in the World Wrestling Federation, Ivan cuts nuts off. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, he called me Ivan all year long. They have no sense of humor for this Packer game at all. Where do you work at that's going to tolerate the new look? I work for Charlie's Diamond Softwater, and he has no sense of humor, and I'll have to suffer for the next three months anyway, so. But the bottom line is, are the chicks going to go crazy with the new look? Uh, I don't think so. They didn't go crazy last year, but maybe this year they will. You never know. Mike Ditka did. Yeah. The booby prize for the evening? An autographed picture of former Packer and recent traffic school enrollee Tim Harris. Maybe you can explain to me, he said in the Milwaukee Sentinel that he thinks football is better than sex. You think his sex life just sucks that bad or he likes football that much? I think he sucks, period. That's okay, the guy that won it got a quick and easy $5 for it later that night. We raised some money for Toys for Tots, that's what it's all about, it's all funny. We did a good job, we had a lot of fun. I guess it's better to feel good than to look good. Uh, Mike Ticka, this bud's for you.
Taking a look at one other benefit, which... Sun, fun, rock and roll in a two-day outdoor event so huge it takes two stages to contain the action and even that might not be enough. Battle on the Bay 6. 20 bands, two stages, noon to 9 p.m. Saturday, May 30th and Sunday, May 31st at the Brown County Fairgrounds in De Pere. Battle on the Bay 6 with a special guest appearance by local metal masters, aggressor, and a huge wet t-shirt contest each day. Ladies, you could win hotel and airfare to Las Vegas. Two stages, 20 bands, only $3 admission, Saturday, May 30th and Sunday, May 31st. First at the Brown County Fairgrounds in De Pere. Brought to you by Pepsi Miller Genuine Draft and Mecca Music Green Bay. Last year, over 1,600 fans of Sun Fun and Rock and Roll flocked to the beach for War on the Shore 4. Who knows how many people will join the party this year. Budweiser presents War on the Shore 5, Saturday and Sunday, June 13th and 14th. A dozen bands and all the sun you can soak up on the sandy shores of beautiful Harps Lake, halfway between Manitowoc and Green Bay. Guys, don't miss the Wild Wet T-Shirt Contest. Ladies, you could win your way to Las Vegas. War on the Shore 5, only two bucks admission, June 13th and 14th on beautiful Harps Lake. Take I-43 to Highway 147 East, turn left at the Paps sign. No carry-ins, ID to drink alcohol, event held rain or shine. Reverend Norb suggests not drinking and driving. Howdy, ho, down, no account, Tom Cat, no hoot, yes, for any sitting bird shooting famous pig rustlers. How's by you? You know, I couldn't help but noticing that in the space of the last few weeks, a goodly number of large and well-established local nightclubs have scuttled the format that brought them success, instead opting for, you guessed us, Festus, go in country. Club owners, read my lips. You'll be sorry. It's like this. There's a certain percentage of the current country crowd that, for reasons that completely elude me, are true blue dyed in the world country western nuts. They always have, and they always will, eat, breathe, sleep, spit, and poop country music, which is fine as long as they keep about a mile downwind for me while they do it. But the vast majority of today's country music fans are of the come and go variety. Six months to a year from now, and they'll have abandoned country western for something equally as stimulating, like needle pointer parcheesi. And who can blame them? Oh, but Reverend Norm, how can you speak ill of country music? It's the voice of the American working man. The average everyday schmo who works hard, plays hard, but tries not to think hard about anything. Yeah, sure it is. While modern country does try to preserve its down-home character, the majority of today's country hits are not written by heartbroken part-time truck drivers named Merle. They're dreamed up in smoke-filled corporate boardrooms by middle-aged guys in bad toupees and loud sport jackets named Howie. Modern country is even more false and contrived than commercial rock, dance, and top 40. In point of fact, it's on roughly the same level as the new kids on the block. Besides that, it's corny, moralistic, and backward. But who am I to be critical? But don't get me wrong. I think turning your nightclub into a country joint's a great idea. Therefore, here's my top 10 reasons why your nightclub should go country. Number 10, everybody loves a bandwagon jumper. Number 9, tobacco spit good for long-term carpet life. Number eight, country music appeals to a more upscale breed of simpleton than heavy metal. Number seven, for my money, you can't hear Don't Rock the Jukebox too many times in one night. Number six, open mic night. I mean, think about it. Number five, if country fans have something to do in November, maybe they won't be anywhere near the polls. Number four, mechanical bull draws clientele that you would personally want as your friends. Number three, going country will increase your appeal to that treasured bingo player demographic. Number two, every time the song I Got Friends in Low Places comes on the jukebox, 50 totally sloshed alcoholics will buy another round because Garth Brooks said it's cool. And the number one reason why you should start seriously considering turning your nightclub into a country joint. Come on, anyone can run a club full of young, slim, beautiful women. Be a man, run a country bar instead. On a closing note, don't try to understand them. Just rope them up and brand them. Ride them, cowboy. bum ba dee da bum ba dee da bum ba dee da bum ba dee da Greetings, home shopping enthusiasts! Would you care to guess who, out of all humanity, I pity the most? The unfortunate soul with the head like a bull who I feel is most deserving of the sum total of my sympathy? No, it's not Shane Reno, but you are on the right track. The man, woman, or child I feel to be the truly most pathetic critter on the face of planet Earth today is none other than lantern-jawed lug Jay Leno. Jay Leno? But why, Reverend Norm? You certainly can't pity the new host of The Tonight Show's financial status. After all, the man makes more money in the time it takes him to wipe his butt than you'll make all year. Do you pity the bug-eyed wonder, then, because he has the nigh-on impossible task of filling Johnny Carson's legendary wingtips? 
Mercy, no! Taking over for Johnny should be a breeze! I mean, let's face it, Carson would have been doing himself and us a favor if he would have opted for early retirement like, uh, 15 years ago. Instead, this brown-eyed TV personality with a haircut like a screwed up Dairy Queen cone refused to bow out gracefully, subjecting us to barrage after barrage of the same old guests, monologues, and stupid pencil tricks until finally the old fart himself got sick of it. Truly the worst case of wearing out a welcome since the Soviets dropped in on East Germany. In that respect, Leno's job couldn't be easier. The sad thing is, discounting an extraneous so surreal Doritos commercial or 12, Jay Leno used to be somewhat hip. He was young, he was bright, he had a future. Now look at the guy. Every night he stands on stage like a robot, delivering bland, corny, insipid, lowest common denominator, Carson-style NBC-approved monologues to the same half now, red tie wearing, blue sports coat, buying audiences that were sorry to see Johnny leave. Bleh! I mean, if you can stand the pain, watch the guy once. He looks like he'd rather be anywhere but on The Tonight Show, and the sad thing is, he's got to pander to the same gibbering idiots every day for the rest of his life! I mean, Leno was probably glad when he heard Sam Kinison died, simply because that's one less member of his peer group that's going to heckle him unmercifully. Damn it, Jay, if you're out there, and I know you are, please, spare yourself the ulcers. Consider a lateral career move. And just to get your new life off on the right start, here's Reverend Norb's top ten new careers for Jay Leno. Number ten and a half, run camera for Perfect Ten search this Friday. Number ten, Yak Groomer at Cincinnati Zoo. Number nine, body double for Space Ghost. Number eight, home urologist. Number seven, lighthouse. Number six and a half, production manager at Morty's House of Questionable Donut Fillings. Number six, Roseanne Barr's head gynecologist. Number five, guy who puts number five, guy who puts the small plastic tips on shoelaces all day. Number four and a half, stuff envelopes at home, part time, thousands weekly. Number four, weenie vendor. Number three, husky yet sensitive voice at the other end of the one nine hundred man on man phone number. Number two, kindling. And the number one lateral career move suggested for Jay Leno, role model for other people tragically afflicted with really goofy speech impediments. I hope you took some of that to heart, Jay, but just remember, no matter how lousy you are, you'll never suck half as bad as that Arsenio Hall guy they have on one of the other channels. Greetings, citizens of Gotham and lifetime members of Aunt Harriet's Film Decency League. How's it hanging, bat mites? Well, by now, I'm sure it's blatantly apparent that the sequel to 89's box office Bat Bonanza, Batman, has hit the local bat biju in your neck of the bat woods. And I'm sure the requisite lines of sweaty palm bat fans will extend out of the theater lobbies and around the block, causing another wave of bat mania to grip the nation in its eminently marketable bat talons. Now me, I can wait until Batman returns as the 99 cent rental at Super America, because I'm kind of partial to the old campy Batman of the 60s. I mean, millionaire Bruce Wayne and his hunky young ward Dick Grayson sliding down the greased bat poles together, and emerging in the bat cave as the Cape Crusaders lent a certain air of dignity and respect to the role of Gotham's ace crime fighters. But these modern films with the guy from Mr. Mom dressing up in a rubber suit and burning through the...